Miss Live. How are you? I pray that you are all well today. And so, yeah, we're going to go ahead and send this out. Again, we are praying that you are all well this morning, this afternoon. Yay, God. Yay, God. So you know the drill when you come in, go ahead and drop your city, drop your state. Oh, I miss you all so. Yay, God. Yay, God. Hey, Redlands. How are you? Yes, Lansing, Michigan. I'm excited, I'm excited. Yes, so yes, go ahead and tag a friend. Let them know, let your sisters know we are here in the building. I miss you guys so much. Listen, so I'm excited. I'm gonna tag just a few more people. Just letting them know we are here and ready to hear what God has to say. I'm like, yes, and yes, and more yes. We are God approved. When I tell you this one right here, oh, but God, hey, hey, oh, but God, God approved, God approved. And so as you're joining in and we're coming along. I just wanted to say thank you um, for your ministry. Yay, Fontana, I love it. As you're coming in, ladies, just tag uh, your city, your state. Um, as we go forward with this new series, go ahead and hit like, share. Hi, Petra. First Lady Jenny, hello. Yes, so I'm excited about what God is doing. Um, and we are starting a new series. Come on, Canada. Hey, I'm excited. I'm goofy, but I'm excited. Um, we're starting a new series called God Approved. God Approved. Listen, if anybody needs to be approved, if we need approval from anybody, we need God to be the one to approve us, right? And so again, as you're coming on, drop your city, drop your state, your country. Uh, we have uh, so many beautiful, powerful, anointed women in the promised life. I love every last one of y'all, all, all 1,300 of y'all. <laughs> And so I'm excited about what God is doing in your life, in, the, in your ministry, in your marriage, in your motherhood, in your emotions, in your soul. I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. Um, and so we're going to be talking about God approved, God approved, God approved, new series. So first, let me just thank you. Um, you guys did amazing work. Um, we were able, hey Shalonda, we were able to feed, or not feed, I'm so sorry. We were able to bless nine families. I believe only two of them were out of the promised life. So nine families, come on Texas, who never heard of the promised life, someone probably one of you ladies, referred them, and we were able to send them a $90 gift card to help bless them during that Thanksgiving. And the reason why we did gift cards is to also um, respect their dignity so that they could go to the store. So, you know, as women, sometimes we need diapers for the baby. We might need to pick up some feminine products. We might need to grab something else. And so we wanted to make it bigger than just about a turkey. Um, not only that, not everybody celebrates with a turkey. And so we wanted them to be able to have the dignity 
opportunity to go um, into Walmart. They all got $90 gift cards to Walmart. So I want to thank you, Promise Life, um, because you guys donated. You gave towards that. We raised 900 whole dollars in a week. Y'all need to give yourself a clap or some hearts or something in the comments because that is amazing. You helped families who uh, one gentleman in particular, um, his name I, I won't mention just to protect his privacy, but a single dad, um, he didn't know how he was going to make it through uh, the Thanksgiving. He lost his job due to COVID. He's been furloughed. And he was like, you know what? I don't know um, how he's trying to reconnect. I bind that. Uh, and this gentleman, he said, I didn't know how I was going to make it. He said, how did you get my information? He actually thought I was a spam call and a spam email. And I had to keep texting. I'm not spam, sir. We are a Christian organization and we want to bless you and your family. When I gave him the email address, the man began to weep on the phone, a grown man. And he said, thank you. He said, it was my mom who put my name on the list. She must be a part of your organization. He said, I have lost faith. He said, but I thank you for your kindness. And the mother began to message me and said, she raised her children to fear the Lord, but circumstances will cause you to sometimes doubt God, right? And this man, out of the kindness of promised life, you ladies who didn't know him, didn't know his children, were able to give him what he needed. And he said, this is going to bless our family so much. So we're doing the work. And I want to honor and celebrate you for those who, of you who give and donate. This is what we're doing. We're equipping, we're giving back, we're discipling, we're empowering families. Um, and so, you know, I just wanted to thank you, Promise Life. So now let's get into this lesson, God approved. So I know we have FDA approved. We have everything in our world has some type of certification to let you know it's approved. We have things to approve um, if it's kosher, we have things to approve certain foods to certify them as vegan. And as we go into this series, God is going to place his stamp on us in certain areas that are likely to not be touched uh, or talked about in our, 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 our um, normal church settings um, because, you know, uh, maybe the pastors and things like that, they have to deal with uh, the congregation in a whole. Um, but we want to get a little deeper as we study. But as an act of faith, I want you to put in the comments, God approved. Go ahead, put in the comments, God approved. That's right. And so in that and with that being said god is getting ready with his approval he's going to be the shame remover and so i want to talk to you today about something that is plaguing our society plaguing our culture but we're not really talking about it and it's this ugly word called abandonment yep it's an ugly word. No one wants to be abandoned. No one looks for abandonment. No one desires abandonment. Um, no one prays for abandonment. But there is something that happens when abandonment takes place. Now, the reason why I had you do that act of faith of posting God approve in the comments, because it is it is so easy to listen to a lie, to listen to a message, to even sit um, in a workshop or seminar or at church and allow the words to be present, but they not be present in your heart. So this is why we're gonna engage today, um, this evening in California, because there are so many things that have been written on your heart that were put there by an unauthorized author. Oh my God, I'm ready to run. It has been written on your heart by an unauthorized author. And he wrote, has written the word on many of our hearts, abandonment. He was not legal. 
He did it. You know, a tagger, when they go, um, you know, my husband, he loves um, graffiti art. Um, but sometimes, you know, you'll see people, and they'll come and tag up a big, beautiful building that was put there. And then you're just looking at it and you're mad. And to them, they feel, felt like they had the right, but they were unauthorized. They did not have the owner's right to tag their message on this building. And for some of us, the enemy has snuck at night and graffitied over our hearts the words abandonment. Now, see, here's the funny thing. Abandonment can happen in so many different ways, so many different sources. It could come, and sometimes we feel like, Tamara, I don't have abandonment issues because we feel like we're okay. But we live in a culture that is so self-consumed and so self-motivated that even in abandonment, we might not feel abandonment because the culture says, oh, you're a single mama, you're supposed to be able to rock this. Girl, you're strong enough, you don't need no man. You see, it's justifying the abandonment. I'm trying to tell you what I know. I've been there, done that, got several t-shirts, listen. And so, um, as you're, as we're diving into this, let's talk about the definition of abandonment. It is the action of a fact or abandoning or being abandoned. And why are we talking about abandonment? Because again, this is a subject that we hear preached over and right now, maybe possibly in a sermon, you might get tuned up right now, depending on your culture. Um, you know, uh, certain churches, if they're more CCM, they might be jumping and leaping. And maybe if you're more a traditional uh, Pentecostal church, they got that organ going, they got that guitar going, and they'll say, but the Lord is with you. And you'll shout, but you never deal with it. You understand? So God wants to deal with the abandonment where the enemy again has illegally entered and graffitied that those words of abandonment on our heart. And although God has never left us, God has never forsaken us, we still feel empty. We still feel lonely. We still feel confused. And so let's talk about it. What are some of the things that could cause abandonment? Job loss can cause abandonment. Being forelowed, you feel like now your means to support your family is now gone. It was no choice of your own and maybe your employer. It was no choice of their own due to the pandemic. They had to shut things down, but there still creates this, this, this issue of abandonment. Perhaps death of a loved one has created this abandonment. Divorce can create a, a you know, a symptom of abandonment, a feeling of abandonment, being raised in a foster care, a group home. Maybe you were raised in a home where the parents fought and they argued all the time. This can create this abandonment feeling and it could, and the enemy now finds this entryway to create this cycle of abandonment in your heart. Fornication can create abandonment. I know you're like, okay, Tamara, let's not talk about that. But listen, as you sleep with one partner and they don't call you back, it creates this feeling of abandonment. Perhaps out of that act of, of fornication comes a child and now you're having to raise it on your own. That can create this feeling of abandonment. Perhaps you have this long prayer list that you had before the Lord and now you're still waiting. You're still waiting. You're saying, God, I don't understand. I thought that if I did this, you would do that. And because when you did this and it didn't create that, you feel rejected, which creates what? This feeling of abandonment. See, abandonment is so tricky because it could sneak up on you and maybe your life, uh, you know, you could have that perfect family where your father is there and your mother is there. But, you know, an abortion happened or a miscarriage happened. Can we talk real? Can I talk real with you, Promise Life? I don't know about you. But I don't want to just shout over things and I don't want to just put an affirmation over it and feel like, okay, I read my affirmations. I'm okay. No, I want my life to be transformed. I want my life to be changed because I don't know about you. I'm tired of hurting. I'm tired of masking it. I'm tired of pushing through it. I want change. 
I want deliverance. I want to be healed. He said that by his stripes we were healed and we will apply that to a headache. We'll apply that to a backache. But what about the wounds of your heart? It covers it. It covers those wounds. So right now you should be hitting the share button and tagging a friend because this is a subject. This is a subject that many women suffer and we'll talk about it over brunch and we'll talk about it over mimosos and we'll talk about it over, you know, family time and we'll talk about it in a girl session. But when it comes to expressing and allowing the change to happen, ah, we're reserved. But God wants you to know that you've been God approved. <laughs> See, even miscarriages can create a form of abandonment because you felt like your wound refuses to produce. And then you start blaming yourself. There's so many things that women, as we go through life, things come and we have been taught to work over it. We have been taught to pray over it. We have been taught to push through it. We have been taught you have to be strong. But when do you have the opportunity to say, God, huh, here's my weakness. I feel abandoned. I felt abandoned when he cheated on me. I felt abandoned when they didn't support me. I felt abandoned when I was ignored. I felt abandoned when the church leadership that I thought was supposed to undergird me fell apart. I felt abandoned when the church split. I felt abandoned when I lost my job. God, what do I do with this? <laughs> But God wants to heal you. His stripes were not just for physical healing. Oh, but the word says in Psalms 34 and 18, it says the Lord is nigh unto them that are broken heart and safety such as be of a contrite spirit. It is your issues that have qualified you to be God approved. <laughs> God approved. Yeah, yeah. Hadaboko. God approved. God approved. It is your issues because the Lord is nigh those who are brokenhearted. And you're probably still saying, well, Tamara, some of those things don't quite fit. But here's some of the symptoms of abandonment. Always wanting to please others. People pleasing. Maybe you're giving too much in a relationship that's one-sided. Your inability to trust others. That's big. Because they could show you their love. They could be there for you. But it is your fear and the spirit of abandonment that has you locked in to where you cannot trust anyone any longer. Your mama let you down. Your daddy let you down. Your pastor let you down. Your leader let you down. Your boyfriend let you down. The job let you down. Your kids let you down. Oh my God, I feel that one. For some of us, our kids uh, have caused this, this disappointment or this abandonment in our heart because we had a plan for them and they're not quite going uh, 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 the way we thought that they should go and they're making some of the similar mistakes and it's causing us to feel like we weren't enough and it's abandonment because we feel unsuccessful there. Maybe pushing others away to avoid rejection. <laughs> this is what happens to a woman that's feeling abandonment or a man that's feeling and battling with the spirit of abandonment. And when I say spirit of abandonment, I don't want you to feel like, oh, my God, I have a spirit. Oh, Lord. No, we have oppression and the enemy will send certain things to oppress, oppress us that so that we cannot walk into the fullness of our purpose. But we're God approved. Ha, but we're God approved. Hey, and or maybe codependency. You're so dependent on others. You don't want to think for yourself. You don't want to make a decision without their approval. Uh, you know, you just need that codependency. Those are symptoms of abandonment. So let's go to Psalms 27 and 10. Can someone put that in the comments for me? Psalms 27 and 10. We're going to work the scriptures and unravel them. 
because God says you are God approved and shame and the shame of abandonment comes to make you feel discarded. That's what it comes to do. So you can't walk in your fulfillment. You can't walk in your purpose because you feel unworthy. You feel dirty. You feel clean. And you're afraid. It partners the spirit of a band. It partners with fear. So you won't trust again. You won't believe again. You won't try again. Because that thing comes to stifle and choke out the life in you. But Psalms 27 and 10 says, when my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Now, here's the thing. For some of us, we feel like our parents are our backbone and God bless you if that is your testimony. But not all of us have that same story. We, we come from different backgrounds and different support systems. And I love how the scripture says, when your mother and your father forsake you, the Lord will take you up. In essence, he's communicating to us as his daughters in Christ, as his sons in Christ, that listen, even though, uh, you know, the father and the mother institution is supposed to be a strong foundation, even if they forget you, even if they they abandon you. I, the Lord, will take you up. Now, we must go deeper. Because once we study the scriptures, there's key words in here that help us understand what God is trying to really say. And so that word forsake there is to leave, loose, forsake, neglect. And for many of us, people have lost sight of our purpose, which means they're not. Yes, that's right. Colette, put it in the comments. Go deeper. Yes, I almost forgot. Yes, let's go deeper. So if it means to lose or leave or forsake. Here's something I want to add to your perspective. For some of us, the fact that people have lost sight of our potential uh, is abandonment. For some of us, we've lost sight in our own potential and we have abandoned ourselves through procrastination, through doubt, through disbelief. And God is saying, even if someone has lost sight of your purpose, your potential, who I've really called you to be, don't you realize I will take you up? Oh, God. It also means to neglect the refuse to give to neglect the refusal to give you what you need to prosper the refusal to give you what you need to flourish all of that is what that scripture is saying there for sake but it says if thy mother and thy father which represents the two strongest institutions that are supposed to have your back now we know that in american culture that is not so uh, we are used to betrayal in the family matter of fact most of our issues come from family hello somebody i know i'm talking right most of our issues the things that we battle with come from either uh the absence of a mother or a father or the neglect of a mother or a father or maybe your mother or your father lost sight of who God really called you to be so let me explain that because I feel we need to, to dig into that see I never hey Renika I never um, had my parents affirm my potential I love them. They were good God-fearing people. We lived under the church pew. My parents were armor bearers to my pastors. They had keys to the church. My dad was head deacon, deacon at one point. I mean, we lived at the church, but never once did I hear them affirm my purpose. They were so focused on the fact I was a teen parent that they could not see past my mistake. And many people in your life, I hear the Holy Spirit at this point, many people in your life has saw you and they cannot see past your mistake. And because they cannot see past your mistake, they have lost sight of your potential. They can't discern who God has called you to be. Oh God, they cannot discern 
discern that you are more than just your issue. You're more than just your circumstance. You're more than just the thing you're going through at the moment. You are chosen by God. So when they lose sight, that word forsake means to lose. So oftentimes we won't even battle this spirit correctly because we feel like we have everything. Oh my God. And so God wants to help us because he says, even if your father and your mother, the things you thought that were supposed to protect you, that's the father's job. The things you thought that were supposed to provide for you, that's the father's uh, position. And then the, the mother, the nurturing, the loving, the kindness, those things that you thought were supposed to love you and nurture you and, um, and, and, and curate your potential when those things forsake you. Oh, the Lord himself, the Bible says, will take you up. Oh, but what does it mean? Let's go deeper. <laughs> what does it mean? Let's go deeper. The word up there means to gather, receive, remove, gather in, collect, bring up the rear. Oh, that's my favorite one. To gather an individual into a company of others. To be brought in or into association with others. Oh, Rashete. Hey, can I prophesy to you today? Can I prophesy you today? Can I prophesy to you today? The Lord is taking you up. And for many of you, <laughs> for many of you, you felt like, I don't even know how I ended up in the promised life. I don't even know who referred me. I don't know who invited me. I came across the video here or there. I don't even know what, you know, this is really all about. And God is saying, I'm taking you up. I'm bringing you into a company of believers. I'm bringing you to a company of associated with others who will rally around you, who will have my spirit, who will have my discernment, who will have my anointing and they will rally around your purpose and that is God's way of taking some of us up hmm I love how it says remove because one of the first things that happens when God starts trying to curate your purpose he removes you from damaged environments or environments that can cause damage Oh, Rashi. So often we are confused and we feel like, God, you are abandoning me even further. When really that is a part of his process. That is a part of what he's doing. He's not cutting you off. He's not isolating you. But he is curating you. He's removing you from areas that can cause you damage. Environments that can cause you damage or damaged environments. There's a difference. There's some places that it's not necessarily that they're bad, but for your purpose, for your development, you can't grow there at that time, at that moment. So God will remove you. That's what that scripture says when it says, take you up. He will gather you. I love how it says he will bring you up from the rear. I said on this live before, uh, uh, when COVID first happened, God gave me a prophetic word and he said, God is breathing on the no names. I said that. God is breathing on the no names. And with that, many people got confused and was like, so what are you saying? But I also said that the Lord was going to give us before the end of the year, 10 chapter leaders. And when I tell you we have 11 chapter leaders within a matter of months, because God is raising up the no names to go out and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. God is raising up the no names to gather the women. And that's the part of the Lord taking them up. God said, Oh my God, this is what the Lord is saying so he's collecting us for such a time as this he's removing us from damaged environments he's removing us from environments that can be damaging so you're not abandoned 
Now, we're going to go deeper into this scripture because in this text, in Psalms 27 itself, I, I admonish you to go read the whole chapter, but it is the chapter, uh, this is the particular text that you've probably heard this scripture before where it says, um, you know, I, uh, I rather dwell in the house of the Lord all of my days. This is, this is David. I want to, I actually want to read that to you. Um, I'm going to pull that up. Ah, Yorobo. Hey, Jesus. Um, yeah, I'm going to pull that up because I need to. Yes. So this is the, um, Psalms 27. This is the scripture where it says, one thing I have desired, Psalms 27 and 4, full immersion. That's right. Uh, Psalms 27 and 4 says, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. But when you read the text, I mean the whole text, remember Promised Life, you have to read things in context. When you're studying, you have to read things in context. And then Psalms 27 and 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength and my life. And whom shall I be afraid? Oh, David is talking some good stuff. He's talking some good stuff. But then verse 9 throws a clinker in there. Something I had misread because I've quoted, you know, particular scriptures. Lord, one thing that I desire, I desire to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And we're high-fiving David. And that's a whole praise party within itself. But let's read verse 9. Psalms 27 and 9. Someone put it in the comment. It says, Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not. Neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. What? Why? What happened? David, you was talking about dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. You were saying that the Lord was the strength of your life. You were saying all of these great attributes of your Lord God. You was praising him and the Holy Spirit dropped. And he said, Tamara, because David suffered from abandonment. We know that his father left him on the backside of the mountain to tend to the sheep. He never called him forth to even be considered to be anointed king. And I said, Holy Spirit, then why this change? He said, because verse 9 is really where my children live. They say verse 4. They say verse 1. But Verse 9 is really where my children live. And I said, well, God, explain. I, I, I'm not understanding. What is this change? And he said, daughter, he said, my goal is not for my children to dwell in my house forever. I'm going to run. I'm going to run. Oh, he said, that is not my desire. And I said, Lord, you're going to have to break this thing down to me. I thought that that was a good thing. He said, no, David was saying that trying to prove that his love for me was great when he really was hiding from his fear of abandonment. He didn't want to leave my presence because he thought I wouldn't go with him. He didn't want to leave my presence because he feared that his daddy left him and Saul gave up on him and God might do the same thing. So if I stay Stay here and wrap my arms around him. He won't leave me. But he was supposed to be king. You can't be king and stay and laid up in prayer. God said you got to go out. Go ye out into the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is where we are. Hey, Yarabai, you say we have abandonment issues. We live in verse 9. We quote verse 1. We show people our verse 4. And God is saying, my job is not for you to sit up in the four walls and lay and worship me. You're to get your oil and carry it out to the earth. He was supposed to be king. You can't rule the kingdom if you're shut up in the holies of holies. And I know it sounds good. And this is why people don't move me um, when they say how long they prayed. That doesn't impress me. 
They don't impress me when they tell me how long they fast. That don't impress me. Why? Because we weren't meant to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I love it when Jesus uh, said to them, Lord, are you going to do this? Are you going to do that? He said, listen, I must be about my father's business. I don't have time to sit up in a synagogue and quote scriptures back and forth to save people. I need to go out and heal the sick. I need to go out to the leper. I need to go out to the abandoned one. I need to go rescue a generation. God. God. So David had this abandonment issue going on. And I know we quoted that scripture, Lord, one thing that I desire that I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He didn't want to go face his enemy. He was afraid that, Lord, I tried to invest my relationship with Saul and he ended up being jealous of me and trying to kill me. Lord, I don't know what I did to my daddy, but he got me back here fight, fighting lions and tigers and bears on oh my. And I don't understand what I did to my brothers, why they won't embrace me. I'm down here trying to bring them lunch. And they telling me, go home. They're telling me to quit. They're telling me, why are you here? abandonment so David is saying Lord I'm, I'm gonna cling on to you I'm never gonna leave you and I'll never forget when I was in social service uh, when I first uh, um, well while I was going in, in college and I had to go with a social worker to separate these children to come to get these children because their mother was on drugs really bad the kids you know were just neglected and I will never forget that those babies cried over their mother. Their mother was going to jail and they were going into foster care and they boohooed and they scratched and they fought us and they bit us and they clawed at us and they kicked us and they spit on us and they cussed us out. And I'm sitting here looking like you living with roaches. Y'all don't have no food. Y'all don't have no electricity on. And God says, because it doesn't matter how bad the parent is. That is supposed to be that sense of connection. And it doesn't matter. So God says, listen, David had abandonment issues, even though his daddy was not a good daddy. Even though his daddy didn't support him, even though his daddy lost sight of his lost sight of his potential. This is David now expressing this abandonment towards God. And God is saying he doesn't want you to spend hours in prayer and not go out. He doesn't want you to just hide yourself and say, I'm just going to bury myself in the word. I'm just going to bury myself. I'm just going to listen to, I'm not going to, no, that's not what God wants. That's an abandonment spirit talking. So this is, so this is David's response. And you must understand between verses, David is having conversations. Holy Spirit is healing his heart and dealing with him. And then we get the verse. It says, when thy mother and father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. So you must understand. The Lord had to deal with him between verse 9 and verse 10. The Lord had to speak a word to him and remind him, listen, I'm not your daddy. And God wants to tell you. He's not your mother. He's not your dad. He's not that boss who fired you. He's not that man who left you, used you and left you. He's not your ex-husband. He's not your ex-lover. Uh, He's not the ex. He's not the teacher who abandoned you and called you stupid. He's not the professor who told you you're too dumb to finish this course. He's not that. He's not that leader who refused to pour into you. He's not those church people who talk about you. He's not the family that says, oh, really? You trying to find God now? He's not that. He's saying if they do forsake you, the Lord will take you up. He'll collect you. <laughs> He'll place you in a company of believers. Oh, my God. If this is blessing you, y'all better put some hearts in the comment. Now's a great time to share and tag. Now's a great time to share and tag. Tag a friend. Tag a woman who you know. Tag a man. I don't care who you share it with. Because trust me, they everybody deals with abandonment issues. So let's go to verse 11. Oh, the Lord will collect you. Hey, the Lord will collect you. Oh, I feel that. There's an anointing on that. The Lord will collect you. He won't let you stay out there. The Lord himself will take you up. The Lord himself will come and collect you. Psalms 27 and 11. We're going to work this text, my God. We're going to work this text. It says, 
teach me thy ways. Notice the transition now. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Who is his enemy? Abandonment, rejection. That's David's enemy. I can't be alone. So I'm going to hide in this temple and I'm going to pray. I'm going to, I'm going to cry out. I'm going to lay here, but I don't want to face the abandonment. God, I don't want to face uh, the, my enemies. I, I please, please don't, don't, don't make me face them. And then the Lord tells him in verse 10, when your mother and father forsake you, I will take you up or I will collect you. I will come and get you. I'll pick you up. I'm like a Uber. I'll come right to where you are and I'll take you to the destination that I promise. And then in verse 11 is the heart posture where we need to be. It says, teach me thy way, O Lord. And lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. See, all I know is how to hide. And even hiding in the presence of God at the uh, uh, past the extended time is unhealthy. Here's the thing, because God is a God of action. So when we come into his presence, he's always going to give instructions. He gave Jesus instructions. He gave Peter instructions. He gave Moses instructions. Moses came into God's presence. What did he do? He got instructions to go deliver a nation. Job came into his presence and what did he do? He got instructions to just be still and see the salvation of the Lord. Just wait. Though he slay me yet, will I trust him? Paul came into the presence of the Lord and what did he get? He got instructions that you are to go to the Gentile. <laughs> and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every time we encounter the presence of God, he is always giving us an assignment for purpose. But if you're trying to stay there to hide from purpose, it's because we suffer from abandonment. But the Lord is going to teach you his ways. This is what David said. Now, let me, let me go back here. That word... Um, teach teach me thy ways uh that word way there means manner habit a course of life why do we need the lord to teach him his ways because the only way we know is to operate like an orphan the only way we know how to survive is acting like the fatherless the only way I know how to act is like a person who has the abandonment and has been abandoned and broken. I built my life around nursing my own wounds. I, I have my whole life set up to not remind me of my enemy of abandonment. And so I don't have to face it. So for David, he hid into the temple when he was supposed to be running the kingdom. And maybe you're hiding and you go from live to live to live to live trying to cope and trying to fix, but you never get up and go and do see I'm a pusher that's my anointing that's my job I I, I, I operate in, in different anointings but one of them is to push people into purpose and this is why David is saying the only way I know how to act Lord is abandoned huh the only way I know how to act is rejected the only way I know how to act is disappointment teach me your ways oh Lord and that word way there is your manner your habits, the course of life. Teach me the course of life because all I know is abandonment. All I know is disappointment. All I know is rejection. All I know is this. But God is saying today, right now, as you're even typing it in the comments, teach me your ways, oh Lord, or teach me, Lord, however you want to do it. God is saying he's coming up on you. He's going down into the recesses of your heart. He's going down into the recesses of your soul, and he's snatching up. He's bringing up some of you are having flashbacks of, of fathers walking out of you, fathers making Making commitment some of you were even oh my god some of you I see uh, where there's been molestation even from family members I see I see those things flashing and you felt like you weren't protected I see abandonment I see parents walking out on you I see leaders giving up on you and God is saying as those things are flashing don't fight it he's bringing it up so he can cut it off he's bringing it up so he can heal it Oh my God, he's bringing it up so he can pour his healing blood virtue over it. God just doesn't save us from sickness. He saves us from heart wounds. He's getting ready to show you his manner. I'll never forget, uh, we had adopted 
um, three of my cousins, my mom, she was an amazing woman, and she adopted three of our cousins because my aunt was on drugs. And when we sat down to eat, I'll never forget the first day we picked them up from the foster home. My parents are from the South and they made mashed potatoes and smothered chicken and gravy and biscuits and green beans. I mean, my parents were always cooking like that. And when we sat down at the table, they didn't wait to say grace. They didn't wash their hands. They didn't use their forks and spoons. They just start grabbing and stuffing the food in their mouth. And, and me and my siblings were looking like, oh my God, what's wrong with them? And, the, and, and my mom said, that's okay. We have to show them we have to teach them because the only way they know is the way they were taught in that system and for many of us we are even overlooking the table that God has put before us because we're orphans so we're just grabbing and shoving because we think that God's promises are going to run out Oh, I'm talking to somebody. We think that, you know, God bless me this time so I better use it in because I don't know he might not bless me again. I better go with any old person and I'm just going to throw my heart out there because who knows when I'll see love again. I'm not going to trust nobody because, you know, people be giving up on you. Who knows? And God says he's getting ready to show you the proper manner of how a daughter of the most high God sits at the table. He's getting ready to show you the proper manner of how a daughter of the king responds to circumstances. He's getting ready to show you hey, ha, ha, the proper manner of how to act when God gives you a promise. He's getting ready to show you the proper manner on how to deal with that spirit of abandonment. He's going to show you the proper proper manner on how to navigate through life not as a broken woman not as a bruised woman but as a god approved woman hey my god he's getting ready to show us not only is he getting ready to show us hey tiffany not only is he getting ready to show us i love you tiffany i've been praying for you not only is he getting ready to show us his the manners he's getting ready to give us his habits Notice that word way there means manner, habits, the course of life. And so for most of us, we have the habit of assuming we're going to automatically be rejected. We have the habit of assuming they don't like me. I don't like me. I don't know what's going on. I just know they're not. I just know I'm not good enough. I, we are self-rejecting. We reject ourselves before anybody else can. We're in the habit of receiving rejection. And God is saying, no, no, no. He's getting ready to teach you his habits and that you're a God approved woman. <laughs> See, you got to go through the proper scanning. And, and I know that many of you are saying, but Tamara, you don't know I'm bruised. Oh, I'm feeling the anointing of God. I could just run right now. You're saying, Lord, Tamara, you don't understand. I'm abused. I'm, I'm broken. I've, I've been through too much. I've, I've, I've given up on God. I, I might do this and I do a little bit of that. And Lord, I'm so guilty of this and I'm over it. I'm sick of it. I'm tired. And, and you're like, if God, examines me he's going to find every spot and wrinkle because notice when you are FDA approved that's because they've done a thorough examination of you <laughs> help me Holy Ghost oh Lord Jesus and God is saying he's done a thorough examination of you Whew. and all he see is red he looked at yeah, yeah, you cheated. Yeah, you lied. Yeah, you fornicated. Yeah, you cussed. Yeah, you, you, you feeling guilty. Yeah, you beat up on yourself. Yeah, you've done some things. Yeah, you're not perfect. Yeah, you keep doubting me. Yeah, you gave up on me. Yeah, but I keep seeing red. Every time the Lord tries to inspect you, he keeps seeing red. What is the red? What is the red that he's seeing? He's seeing the blood of Jesus Christ. God is saying that every time the enemy tries to accuse and hold your flaw up before the Lord, you're God approved because of the blood of the lamb, because of the blood of Jesus Christ. It is the blood that cleanses. It is the blood that approves. It is the blood that rinses. It is the blood that helps. It is the blood that heals. It is the blood that delivers. And oftentimes we reserve salvation once we go to the altar. We forget that we're saved. We forget the blood of the Lamb. We forget the power and potency of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But He is the reason why we are God approved. We are God approved with every flaw, with every imperfection. Every time that the Lord rotates you around and you kept saying, See, 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 He's saying, No, no, God approved. God approved. God approved. Uh, you're God approved woman. 
Ah, Romans 9 and 25. Oh, God. I could run. I could run right now. I'm so excited. Why? Because we have watered down the blood of Jesus Christ. We have watered it down. Hey, we save it and once we go to the altar for salvation, we never research, we never tap back in to what the blood actually did for us. And we don't even realize that it makes us God approve. Romans 9 and 25. It says, as he says also in Hosea. This is Paul talking. I will call them my people who were not my people. And her, my beloved, who was not my beloved. I told you the Lord was going to collect you. The Lord says you have been discarded. Um, almost like the, 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 the game of jacks. You know how you throw the jacks out and they go everywhere. I see many of you have just been thrown out. Just everywhere. And God is saying, no, I and her, beloved, who was not my beloved. I'm going to call you my beloved. God is collecting you. And let's go to Ephesians 1 and 5. I, I want to give you scriptures of, of your foundation of how you believe. Because the spirit of abandonment, it works very parallel with the lying spirit. Oh yeah. Because the lying spirit holds it. The lying spirit is the foundation of abandonment. There is no Christian on earth that should feel abandoned. But yet, we are the most depressed people. Because we've minimized the power of the blood. And we thought that the only thing it was doing was saving us from an eternal damnation. And God is saying every single day I've been trying to put my stamp of approval on you. But you keep waiting uh, for things to be perfect. You will never be perfect. That's why I'm perfect. Oh, God approved. Ephesians 1 and 5. This one's my favorite. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do. And it gave him great pleasure. Oh, oh. listen, it gave him great pleasure to bring you. He had decided to bring you into his own you are no longer from the, 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 the family of drug dealers, from the family of single mothers, from the family of unwed mothers, the dysfunctional family, the drunken family, the family where everybody, the men are going to prison, the family where none of the women are married, the family that's ungodly, the family that has cursed God, the family who's confused, the family that has incest going on, the family that operates in rebellion. You have been adopted into his own family oh this is good news this is good news this is good news and he wanted to do it he wanted to do it when they stuck the nails in his hand he said oh yeah that's for Tamara <laughs> stick it in again stick it harder it don't matter when they pierced him in his side they said oh that's for Michelle that's for Vanessa that's for Valerie that's for Diana that's for Esther that's for Michelle that stick it in I'm adopted I've been drafted into the beloved and it gave him great pleasure for you see that lying spirit will tell you nobody wants you nobody wants you you're not you're, you're not good enough who, who would want you you're damaged goods I mentioned that in, in, in my devotional mended, uh, talking about damaged goods because we've been dropped so many times. We're like a banged up can or a banged up uh, food item on the shelf where people don't want to buy us or don't want to want to deal with us because we're damaged goods. And God is saying, don't you know I brought you in? I collected you. I went on that bargain shelf that everyone else has put you. I went to the clearance rack, rack where everybody puts you. I went to that uh, buy one, get one free rack that you put yourself. Situations diminished your value. And I went and I collected you. And it gave me great pleasure to do it. It gave me great pleasure to do it. I went in the midst of your divorce. That's right, it's day two of the bus, you know, yes. I went in uh, to that divorce. I went into that doctor's room. When they told you the news, 
and you just looked in disgust. For some of you, yes, I hear the Lord says, even your body, you are so, um, I see you looking with disgust at your body. I'm not body shaming. I love whoever and however you are. But I see you looking at your body and you're having disgust around it and you're self-rejecting because you weren't the size you, you used to be um, and some things have happened and you've had children and you are, or some of you have always been uh, heavy or had these things about your body that you did not like. And so that's even a part of your demotivation because you're like, Lord, I'm, I don't like what I see. I don't like what I see in the mirror and I'm disgusted by it. And God is saying that disgust has transformed. You've abandoned your own purpose. But God said, be healed today. God said, be healed today. There's nothing wrong to wanting to be healthier. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't hear, don't hear, don't hear what I'm not saying. But God says, when you look at his creation in disgust, you're telling him that your blood can't work here. I know your blood covers, I know your blood heals, but you can't work here. And God says, be free, woman of God. Be free, man of God. I love you, and I'm coming to collect you, flaws and all, uh, uh, no matter if you're tall, short, skin. Listen, be healed in your emotions. Be healed in that place about body shaming. Don't you dare hate what I created because I'm collecting you. You are mine. You belong to me. There's no more abandonment. You won't abandon your own purpose because you feel like you got to be a certain shape or a certain size. And, oh God, I don't want, I'm going to say it anyway. You know, I don't care. The Lord just showed me some of that body shaming is because there has been some infidelity. You've been cheated on. You've been cheated on before. And the lying spirit has told you, if your body looks like that, you would have a man. You would be able to keep a man. Listen, God is healing. He's healing. He's healing. Yes, he is. He's healing you from the body shaming. He's healing you from COVID-19. I just saw that. He's healing you from all your tumors, all manner of sickness and disease. The Lord is healing you. And God is saying that he does not care about uh, uh, what people have said. Maybe they say you deserved it or if you would have did this and did that. That's all abandonment. God says, no, I'm collecting you. I'm collecting you. John 1 and 12. John 1 and 12. Let me give you scripture. John 1 and 12. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right, the right to become children of God. Now, what does that mean to you? Because we say, I'm a, I'm a child of God. I'm a, oh yeah, I'm a child of God. Then why you keep acting and have the manners of an orphan? Then why do you have the habits of an orphan? Because you are a child of God, there's no more begging God. Whew, I'm about to, oh, there's no more begging God. Please save me. Please heal me. There's no more begging your father. You are a daughter. Rise up, daughter. You are God approved. Lord, I thank you, daddy, for healing my sisters. I thank you, daddy, for healing the wounds of abandonment. I thank you, daddy, for healing the wounds of rejection. I thank you, daddy, for healing my sisters. Thank you, daddy. You are a God approved. You have the right. You have the right to ask for forgiveness. You have the right to ask for forgiveness over and over and over. Yeah, you sinned this morning and you might sin tonight. You have the right to ask for forgiveness. You have the right to ask to be clean. You have the right to be purified. You have the right to ask God to come into your heart and help you to forgive. You have the right to ask the Lord to help your unbelief. You have the right as a daughter. We're not approaching him as abandoned, as if he's going to tell us no in a harsh tone. If he tells you um, um, no, it's only to protect you. But he will not abandon you. We have the right to ask. We have the right to say, Lord, help me. Lord, I'm lost. I'm confused. 
I'm on here posting on social media like I got it all together. God, I'm just as confused and just as scared as the next person. I'm mad, Lord, about this or that. I'm swayed in my emotions. I can't get right. We have the right to ask. Orphans don't ask, they steal. Oh, orphans don't ask, they sneak. Orphans don't ask, they just try to gain favor with people and, or pity. They try to get pit, people to pity them. So perhaps you might give me bread, you might feed me, you might clothe me. But God says you do not have to put a guilt trip on God. You do not have to cause him to have pity on you. He loves you. He loves you. And you are not an orphan. You are God approved. You are God approved. You don't have to steal a blessing. How do you do that? by, uh, you know, maybe you might call us, uh, you know, an old boo, an old flame, somebody you know, uh, you know, and you know you married, you texting them because your husband ain't acting right right now. So you just gonna, you know, allow him to kind of love on you, pump up your emotions, tell you how cute you were and you get your little fix on Route 66 and you're like, okay, good. Okay, Lord, you know what? I'm feeling so much better. And then you go on Facebook or Instagram and you're posting the scriptures about how good the Lord is. You just stole something. And you're trying to use that false emotion of, of feeling good and, and feeling. And now you're going to switch it to Jesus. God said, you're, an, you're not an orphan. You don't have to steal. You want peace? I can give it to you. You ain't got to steal it. You ain't got to cuss somebody out to feel better. And now who I feel a release. You don't have to steal it. You're not an orphan. You are God approved. God approved. God approved. This is another way how we sneak it. Because remember, orphans sneak, orphans steal, and orphan acts for pity. That's how they get things done. So pity, pity me, oh, woe with me. They always got a story, have mercy, you know, that type of thing. How we sneak it as an orphan is we find somebody who's doing worse than we are. And we try to be one up on them and be like, oh, girl, she got a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. I, I would have did better than that. Now you're stealing some, you know, sneaking. No, we're we're not orphans. We're God approved. We're God approved. I'm going to give you another scripture, but I want y'all to put it in the comments. God approved. Put it again. You're God approved. You are a God approved woman. He signed the paperwork. The Bible says, oh, Jesus, 1 Corinthians 6 and 20 says you have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God with your body. You have been bought with a price. He saw you on the shelf and he, everybody said, pass you up. Everybody had their issues. And God is saying, I am going to purchase her. I am going to buy him. Why? Because they're God approved. I see the potential. I see I see beyond the issues. I see beyond the divorce. I see beyond the single mama. I see beyond the money issues. I see beyond the credit issues. I see beyond the sickness and disease. I see beyond the emotional instability. I see beyond the mental illness. I see beyond the, uh, the ups and downs and highs and lows. You are God approved. You've been bought with a price. You've been bought with the price. I'm going to give you another one. And we're done. Ephesians 1. Did I do this one? Ephesians 1 and 5. Oh, I did. I did that one. No, 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 no. That's not the one I want to do. I'm sorry. My iPad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the one I want to do. 2 Corinthians 6 and 18. 2 Corinthians 6 and 18. And you can put that in the comments. And I would love for you to tag and to share this with someone. Because, listen, I cried as I was preparing and putting it all together. I, I study all week long and I just begin to weep because the Lord told me the promised life is a safe haven. And he's collecting his women and he's putting them here so that they can get the healing that they need so that they can get the encouragement that they need, so that they can get the strength and the push that they need from him. It has nothing to do with me. If I didn't say yes, God would have rose up another person. But I know I'm God approved. 
with all my jacked up mistakes, with all my insecurities, I'm God approved. So 2 Corinthians 6 and 18, it says, and I will be a father to you. I'm going to say that again. And I will be a father to Petra, to Valerie, to Michelle, to Renika, to Kelly. I will be a father to you and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. So I don't care what they call you. I don't care what they've labeled you. I don't care what they said about you. I don't care what you say about yourself. God has said it. I will be a father to you and you will be my son and you will be my daughter, says the Lord Almighty. It is done. That is God's approval. <laughs> no more cast out. So what we're going to do as we wrap up and I'm, I, I hope this blessed you. I really do. I hope this bless you. Um, I really do. I, I just hope it blessed you. I just really do. I hope it blessed you. I hope it blessed you. Ah, Roboco. Yes, see. So what we're getting ready to do is we're getting ready to put some God approved on it. Y'all know I like giving y'all assignments. <laughs> that's the that's the teaching teaching anointing. And I want you to get in your mind. And if Kelly or Vanessa um, can put in the comments, because you need to sew into this. I normally don't ask. Um because I feel like if you know that the word has blessed you, you will sow into it regardless. I'm, I'm a giver. I'm a sower. This is what I do. Um, the Bible says he gives seed to the sower. So I always have because I'm always giving. Um, if Kelly or Vanessa can put the text to give um, in the comments, if you text the number 77977, if you text T-E-M-I-N, which stands for Tamara Ellison's Ministries, you will be able to text to give, okay? I know some of you like the Cash App, um, and you can do the Cash App too. Um, so if Kelly or Vanessa, um, there are two of our Promise Life chapter leaders, uh, if you guys could put that in the comments, um, and I'll pin the comment, because you need to sew into this. But a part of this is this abandonment thing Thank you, thank you. Um, Vanessa, it's T-E-M-I-N. And so with this abandonment, I hear the Lord saying, try it again. Yeah. Some of you have given up on dreams, on goals. I'm talking about life stuff. Like, I'm not going back to school. It was too hard. I didn't understand it. Thank you, darling. It was too hard. I didn't understand it. I'm going to quit. You know, it's just, it's whatever. Nobody will help me. I hear that in the spirit right now. Your, your biggest complaint to the Lord, even today, was, Lord, I don't have no help. Ugh, I'm telling you, I hear it. Word of knowledge. I don't have help, Lord. You want me to do all this stuff? I don't have no help. I can't raise these kids by myself. I can't do this. I'm trying. I don't have any help. I hear you. And God is saying that's an abandonment. And he wants you to realize that his moments and times that he is giving to you, those times of refreshing your prayer time, your devotion time, you really feel at peace and your happiest moments are right then and there. And God is saying, listen, I still need you to give out. I still need you to come out of my presence and go do what I told you to do. I need you to come up out of my presence and go and feed the hungry. I need you to go and get the lost. I need you to go and get the abandoned. I need you to go and get the, the unsaved. I need you to go. I need you to. 
because that's how God's going to teach you his ways. God is getting ready to give you some encounters. And I'm, this is a prophetic word. God is getting ready to give you some encounters that are going to teach you how to act. Oh, I see that testimony. Thank you, Diane. God is getting ready to show you the manners of the Lord on how daughters walk, on how, you know, uh, daughters walk, act, eat, partake, respond. Yeah, we don't respond as those who've been uh, dropped before. Ooh, yeah, I see in the spirit. Ooh, ha. I see in the spirit where some of you have been dropped so many times, you're afraid to walk. Like I see in the spirit where you've been dropped and it's like your legs are, you know, broken and, 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 and in the spirit, they're not naturally broken, but in the spirit, they're broken because they kept saying they were going to help you. And they kept saying that they were going to do this. And they kept saying they were going to do that. And, and, and you can't trust those. You can't trust those who were supposed to keep you and hold you. And you, and you've been dropped so many times in the spirit, your legs are broken and God has been killing you, but you are afraid to walk. Ugh, that's the abandonment. But today, let it be broken ha, off of your mind. Oh, yeah, Rashi. Let it be broken off of your spirit. Let it be broken off of your soul. This spirit of abandonment that plagued you, that will stop you from trusting, stop you from reaching, stop you from dreaming, stop you from progressing and paralyze you and you're acting as if your legs are broken and God says, no, I've healed your legs. I've healed that issue. Walk again. <laughs> ah, walk again. Hey, walk again. Yep. Walk again. Yep. Walk again. Walk again. Walk again. Try again. Believe again. Trust again. Hey, trust again. Ah, that's a word. That's a whole word. Oh, da, da, ba. Trust again, God said. Trust him. Teach me your ways. Teach me your ways. Teach me your ways. This was David. He understood. God, I'm acting like I'm abandoned. I'm sorry. Teach me your ways. I got to know. I have to have an understanding of how you operate. I have to under have an understanding of how a son functions. David knew how to function as a warrior. David knew how to function as a king. David knew how to function as a worshiper. And we can hide under those things, baby. Let me tell you, I'm a living witness. I was a praise and worship leader for years and I could get up and sing the heavens down and go back to abusive uh, marriage. I could sing the heavens down. People would come up and say, I've been healed under the anointing. Oh, you're so powerful. Oh my God, you could pray. And guess what? Go back home to dysfunction go back home ready to commit suicide so we can hide under those things that's why those things don't impress me hey i tell you about those things don't impress me but what impresses me when i can see the fruit that you can trust that you can love that you can endure that you can obey and god is saying walk again daughter you're god approved Walk again, trust again, believe again. Let that spirit of abandonment know it has no power. Why I'm not binding and slicing and doing all that? Because God said it's information that you need. This information, the Bible says it is the word. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God says as we preach the word, this is why I just don't do motivational messages. We have a purpose. God has an intent. It is the word of God when it is preached. It breaks off the bounds of your mind. It transforms the mind. It gives you information for you to make biblical decisions. It's him teaching you his manner. It's him teaching you his way. No more abandonment. And I don't have favorites. I just heard that. Oh, that is so. Mm -mm, I don't have favorites. The Lord highlights who he wills. And you are all highlighted to him. I give my life for all the members in the promised life. I skip dinners for all the members in the promised life. I wake up at 6 a.m. for all the members in the promised life. I listen, I fast for all the men. Why? Because I understand that God is collecting. Oh my God. Hmm. 
I'm debating about reading the scripture. Oh my God. God is going to cause you, listen, he going to cause you to trust father figures, mother figures. He's going to cause you to trust. And, and I had this message prepared way before. He's going to cause you to trust in romantic relationships. Some of you can't even date healthily because you're so used to being abandoned. I hear this, that you will just get the man, sleep with the man. You don't even expect nothing because you've been dropped so many times. You don't even know how to date. And so the Lord is going to teach you and show you how to value yourself, that yeah, you're worthy. You're worthy of it. You're worthy to be dated and treated like a queen. Listen, and he's saying it's not about your body. You're more than just sex. You're more than just that. Who told you? That's an orphan spirit that causes you just to say, oh, this is what they want. I'm going to give it so they can just go on on because I know they're going to reject me anyway. No, that is not your portion. You are God approved. And you must hold them to a standard because you're worth it. God has collected you. God has collected you. God has collected you. He's collected you. And no, you don't have to settle. Because, uh, you know, I'm... Mm, Galatians, and I'm done, I promise you. Galatians 5 and 6. It says, to the redeemed, those who were under the law. Ooh, I want to get into that but I, we don't have time so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So what God is getting ready to do right now, if you're driving, lift one hand. If you're at home or somewhere uh, where you can lift both hands, lift both hands. Because the Lord is getting ready to send the spirit of his son. He's getting ready to give you a divine download right now. He's doing a transfusion. He's doing a trade. He says, give me your garment of heaviness and I will give you your, my garment of praise. God is getting ready to make a trade. He's getting ready to make a transaction. He's getting ready to remove and uproot. I see him pulling up the roots. Yep, let the tears fall, baby. He's uprooting. He's snatching. He's pulling the self-hatred. The, yeah, you didn't cause him to do that. It's not your fault. God is healing, and you will be able to say, Abba, Father, and mean it. You will be able to cry out to your daddy and mean it. And God is saying, no. Um, this is why um, even the business, I see it, hasn't taken off because there are some abandonment issues in your soul. So you can't even trust the partners that you need to take you to the next level because you've been dropped before. But today, woman of God, woman that is God approved, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Yoboko Yasi, in the name of Jesus. Be healed. And God is downloading that. God is downloading that. Oh, ra, I feel the, uh, whew, hey, I feel this thing. My God, I feel it. Oh, hey, ah, and God says, because you're not damaged goods, stop letting everyone handle your soul care. Oh, Listen, because you're not damaged goods, God is getting ready to cause you to even be more particular and guarded about who you allow to handle your soul care. I'm going to leave that right there. Because many people, just because they have a scripture and they know how to tune and move their little hands, you know, mm, and they always want to identify and discern the spirit. I see a spirit. No, 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 no. God says because you're God approved, you can't just be handled any old kind of way. Your healing process can be just handled and jumbled and lumped into this is what everybody gets. No. God said he's getting ready to give you, uh, um, listen, 
I go to uh, my particular restaurants that, uh, you know, that are vegan and they're four or five star uh, and I get to create my own dish. Why? Because it's such an exclusive place. They understand that the palate of each customer is different. And so they're not going to just lump me, you know, uh, you know, at Burger King, they said they can have it your way, but you really only got options of condiments mustard no mustard barbecue onions no but god is saying he's getting ready to tailor your healing process so not everyone will have access to your soul care oh because oh okay god i'm gonna say it and i really don't care because everybody hasn't washed their hands they might can cook good but if they haven't washed their hands it's still contaminated okay I'm about to, oh Jesus, not everybody has washed their hands and they want a food prep. They want to manage and handle your soul. And God is saying, he's getting ready to give you discernment so sharp. That's a part of your value. That's a part of your value. Um, you know, I don't let just everybody do my hair. Hello, somebody. We didn't went and got the inches today. Listen, I have one person. I trust one brand of shampoo. Why? Because I can't just let any and everything handle uh, my, 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 something as simple as my hair. So your purpose, your soul, which is so valuable, you can't just be opening up and then closing and opening up and closing. God said, no, he's getting ready to cause you to be particular. He's getting ready to cause you to be exclusive. He's getting ready to cause you to be exclusive because you can't, I don't even just go to any old doctor. I read the reviews on my doctors. Why? I don't want just any old body practicing on me. And God is saying he's getting ready to do it. That's a part of your value. That abandonment. And orphans, they'll sleep anywhere. They're, they're just happy to have a warm bed. They're just happy to have a roof over their head. So they don't, they'll go from uh, orphanage to orphanage to orphanage. At least it's someone receiving me. And God said that is not your portion anymore. You won't just be bouncing around looking to be accepted, looking to be poured into. God is saying it's going, he's getting ready to highlight. He's getting ready to highlight. Ha! He's coming to highlight. He's coming to highlight. I'm trying to tell you. He's highlighting your soul care practitioners. That's what my sister calls herself, uh, Gwen Matthews. Because it's, it's, it's over. You're not abandoned. You're God approved. You're God approved. Hear me and hear me when I say it. You're God approved. So if you want to sow into the ministry of promised life, this is good ground. We have had testimonies on top of testimonies. We give to our community and we build. You're not giving to me. You're not. You're not giving to me. You're giving to the work that it might continue. And God is highlighting you. Um, and so you can text to give. You can set up recurring payments. If you're saying, Tamara, listen, I want to partner with Promise Life. And I want to be able to give monthly. Or I want to be able to give, you know, every other month. You can set it up how you want to set it up. There's no amount that's too small. Listen, we could do a lot with $5. We want to start supporting orphanages because I'm called to spiritual orphans. And so naturally we want to support orphans. We want to equip the chapter leaders. We want to bring in speakers that are going to be, they're verified by God to handle our soul and take us to the next level. And we can't do this without you. So I know you don't tune me out. Don't scroll to the next. Ooh, I got mine. Let me scroll. No, 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 no. God is teaching us his ways. Orphans eat and get up. Sons and daughters say, okay, listen, I ate at the table. Now, Lord, I will not eat anything from you that didn't cost me anything. I told the Shamar intercessors that this morning. So go ahead and text to give. You just text the number. It'll send you a link. It's that simple. It's secure. Okay. 77977. You text the word T-E-M-I-N, which is Tamara Ellison Ministry. We do business as promised life, so it's still all going to promised life, okay? And so I love y'all. I love y'all so much. Um, if you do me a favor, can you hit that share button? If this blessed you, I'm not going to ask you for hearts. Hit the share button. Oh, yeah. Hit the share button. Invite your sisters, your, um, your sisters in the Lord um, to the promised life. We're growing. 
we're glowing, we're growing, and God wants you to be a part. So again, I love you, Promised Life. Don't forget to share. Go ahead and sow a seed. I love y'all. Bye.